Hello and welcome to the Big AR Show. My name is Chris Black and today I'm going to show you how VizRT can help you tell any story in the studio using augmented reality graphics. So first off, let me tell you a little bit about the tools that we're using here in the studio today. Just in front of me, I have this Shotoku pedestal and this is a mechanical tracking system. So as the camera moves around the studio, our camera operator Seth is going to move the camera all over the studio. It is sitting tracking data over to our virtual set uh, systems. Also just behind me, I have this seven meter uh, a layered video wall. This is an LED video wall that is going to allow us to add in virtual graphics to the studio. And then our director is controlling the entire thing over here. Christian Seidel is our director today. Wave everybody to uh, wave over to everybody, Christian. There you go. He's a nice guy. Uh, he's going to be driving the entire production. And our art director Hannes is also over here, moderating the entire show. So we're going to add in the Fox Graphics package here to our virtual studio. There we go. Now this is the NFL on Fox Graphics package. And uh, Christian, can you bring the lights up for me a little bit? There we go. So we have real-time lighting in our virtual sets where we're able to tie in the lights from the physical studio with the virtual world. So you have both lit the same way. Now as we're changing the lighting on here, Seth is going to start moving the camera around. And you can see that it is indeed a full virtual studio. So we have all the movement that you would have in a virtual set added to our video wall. We call this the virtual window. And the virtual window allows you to add space to your studio so that you have a lot more room to tell engaging stories. In fact, Let's change this for a moment and take a look at a different virtual window where we can start telling some stories here. Let's bring in our NFL on Fox graphics package here just behind us in the virtual window. Here we are. So here's the NFL on Fox graphics package. Now we have some augmented reality graphics already in the studio floor. We also have some clips from Viz1, our ma asset management system. But for the virtual set, it's all about giving your journalists control over the content. So we give them the tools in the newsroom to be able to play, add a playlist of all the content that they're using in the virtual studio, such as our matchup of the day between uh, Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson. Now these are part of a template-driven workflow for the journalists in the newsroom. They can open these up, change the images, text, graphics, whatever they want, and then play them back live on the air from story to story as part of the video wall or also as part of augmented reality graphics in the studio that you see here. And we can do very nice transitions from the virtual environment in our virtual window to the physical world. To help us out with that today, we're bringing out Cletus. Cletus, where are you? Come on out here for a moment. Here he comes. He's going to run out here, smash through our video wall, and walk out into the audience. Let's do that one more time. Watch the monitors just above my head. Cletus, here he comes, catches that football, smashes through, and runs out to join everybody in the studio. So we can have a lot of fun with the different kinds of virtual graphics that we're using here in the studio space. Now when we're telling stories about sports, it's also very important to be able to bring in data to talk about how the game actually progressed. And for this, we're going to bring in the data platform from Astuce Media, which allows us to interact with the sports data using a touchscreen and visualize it using augmented reality graphics. So here we have this football field that has a lot of different players on the field ready to uh, go to action. So I'm going to move over to my touchscreen, and I can grab each one of these players and move them around very easily on the field. So you can see I have complete control over all of these virtual players, and it allows me to analyze different tactics, different strategies that they've had on the football pitch. Now this one, next bit, I'm going to need some help here. Steven, can you come out here for a moment? Thanks a lot. Now you see all these little players that I have on the football field. I want to get them life-size. So I'm going to switch this to head-to-head. -to -head. And I have all the data and also all the scans of each one of the players uh, from Barcelona and Paris. So we're going to take a look at uh, Messi and Drexler. Now what I want you to do is click through these different items while I run out there. All right, here we go. So now I have myself immersed completely with augmented reality graphics on all sides. I've got the players right next to me. So I can use this to talk about how they actually progressed the game. You can see Messi had 45 total passes. Uh, Draxler had one foul. We go down to four passes. Messi had 21 four passes while Draxler only had three. And Messi also had three long balls. You do this for each player. You're putting together the whole picture that uh, Barcelona totally dominated Paris during this game. Thanks very much for your help. Here's a little something to... Thank you. So, now let's take a closer look at these character animations. And for that, we're going to go over to our friends at Sky Sports. Earlier this year, they did a full 3D body scans of all of the players in the Buddhist League. And we have them right here in our studio here today. Here's another virtual window. We've added in the players from Bayern Munich. Now these are actual 3D scans of each player on the team. So every 3D model is completely different. We're going to add them into the studio as AR elements here. There we go. So there's each player coming in while the rest of the team walks up and joins us behind us in the virtual window. 
Now, since these are individualized 3D models, we have a lot of content being rendered in real time at the same time using Viz Engine, our 3D graphics engine. Let's take a closer look at some of these models. Let's go over here to Newer, the uh, goalkeeper, and we'll use the camera to really drive around these players and take a look at how big these 3D models really are. In fact, let's actually go over here a little bit further to Boateng. He's got some uh, pretty impressive arm tattoos here. Let's zoom on in and take a closer look. Now, with these 3D models, you can see that they are extremely high resolution with the textures and the polygon count. We can go down and see the hairs on his arm. I mean, these are incredibly high resolution um, 3D models that we have for each player, all being rendered in real time with Viz Engine. Now, when you are talking about sports, it's not enough just to have the graphics in the studio. We also want to be able to bring game footage into the studio. So we're going to go back over here to our touch screen for a second. And using the Viz Libro Sports Analysis System, we're going to be able to analyze what is going on during some match footage. Now, Viz Libro allows us to be able to highlight content in the studio to talk about what has happened during the game. So here we have some image-based tracking, tracking the players, showing different kinds of formations, also tracking the movement of the ball. So as we move forward in time, we can see how the game is progressing. Now, what I want to do is take manual control of it. So I'm going to pause it right here. There we go. And we can take a look at what's going on here. Now, you can see the formation here. It's like it's pretty wide open there. So if he can get it right past there and this player can get in position, then they've got a pretty good shot of moving it down the field. Let's take a look at the coverage here. We're going to do that by swapping angles with the camera. I'm going to pause it right here. So now we can see, yeah, he's got a lot of room to work with here in the virtual studio. So let's play it out and see how the game actually progressed. So we'll play this. We can go back here. We can also do other kinds of hot player highlights. Uh, we can stop this and uh, kick it over here. We're going to slow it down, zoom in, check out this nice footwork that he's doing right here here to get the ball right into position. Now we can do some measurement, distance measurements, and then see how the game actually progressed. Didn't quite make it, but you can see with the Viz Libro Sports Analysis System, we're able to give you all the tools that you need to be able to analyze those hard to understand sports, sports plays. And this is what it's all about here in the studio using augmented reality graphics and the touch screen, is being able to tell a clear story about what is happening through a complex situation. The Weather Channel does this very nicely every day in their In the Lab section. And we have some of their graphics here today in the studio with us. This is something about the anatomy of a tornado. And right now we have a supercell on our, our studio floor. And a supercell is one of those storms that gives birth to tornadoes. So we can see that signature hook echo that tells you there's a tornado present. Now these supercells are massive storms, so we're going to raise this up here. And these can be 30, 40, 50,000 feet in elevation. And at the base of that supercell, the smallest part of it is the most dangerous part, where that tornado is located. So let's lift this whole thing up and take a look at that tornado. There we go. So there's that funnel cloud right at the base of that storm. Now these funnel clouds are a combination of hot and cool air rotating around at extremely high speeds. And when they actually hit the ground, they're going to create a debris cloud which picks up a lot of dirt and can be very dangerous for anybody that's nearby. Now, the Weather Channel uses a lot of these 3D objects to be able to tell complex stories in very compelling ways. Let's take a look at one more from the Weather Channel. Let's take a look at the uh, How to Conquer Mount Everest. So here we have a uh, 3D model of Mount Everest is popping up in the studio floor. This is coming from our Viz World uh, mapping solution at 30 meter digital elevation model resolution. Now this uh, 3D model has a lot of features to it. So you see there's already a little avalanche coming down the mountain. And they're using just this one model to be able to tell the complex story of how you can progress up Mount Everest and the challenges you face. So let's start at 16,000 feet at the base camp. And this is already a very, very high elevation. So you need to get acclimated before you can continue on. After a couple days, you can start making your way up the rest of the mountain. At 18,000 feet, you run into other challenges, such as those avalanches that you saw there. We'll keep on moving on up to 19,000 feet. And this is where you get into the range of those crevasses. And the crevasses can be very wide and very deep. And the only way to get over them is by going over these ladder bridges that you see here. Now, if we keep on moving on up, up to 24,000 feet, we can get into hurricane force winds, fog, and all kinds of weather that's going to make it very, very difficult for you to see where you're going. You need to wait it out until that storm passes. Once you make it up to the top, congratulations, you've made it, but you're not out of the woods yet. There's very thin oxygen up there, thin, at thin atmosphere, and the hikers can cause, have all kinds of other problems such as uh, dehydration, hypotonia, uh, edema, and sleep deprivation. Now, if you do run into trouble, you have to rely on your teammates to be able to get you down because rescue operations cannot come up on these high elevations. In fact, I think we have a little rescue operation going on right now. There's that little helicopter coming in. On really nice conditions, these helicopters can make nice rescues to the base camp, but not much higher because the atmosphere becomes too thin to give them lift. And that's very dangerous for everybody. 
So everything that you've seen so far here is going towards the traditional broadcast model of news, sports, and weather. But let's see what else we can do with augmented reality graphics in the studio. For that, we're going to bring in a different uh, item altogether. This is the castle ruins of Rotun. And with these castle ruins, this, uh, they are being de uh, degraded year after year from time and weather. Now, in order to try to preserve this for future studies, uh, with, they've done a, a scan, a 3D scan, of the entire castle complex. And this 3D scan allows us to be able to zoom in with a camera and take a look at all the features that make up this 3D complex. Now, this can be provided to students for education as well as archaeologists so they can bring it into the classroom and zoom into the different windows in different areas and get to really understand what makes up this uh, complex. Now, let's do one more thing with these uh, Pharo 3D scans that we're doing here. Here is the uh, ancient um, Palace of uh, Duga in North Africa. Now this is also a pharaoh scan, and as we zoom around here, we're going to take a look at what makes up this uh, complex. So we're going to zoom around here. Now this is extremely high resolution 3D models, about 20 milli million polygons. That's all rendering in real time in Fizz Engine. We'll get down to the amphitheater here, and then add in the uh, st stadium complex here. And again, this is one of those very high resolution uh, pharaoh scans. And we can move around here, you can see that uh, we have the entire complex here. But since we're in a stadium, why don't we bring in some more sports content? Now, eSports is a very big, growing industry. So we bring in some eSports content into our studio. In order to talk about eSports, it's important to bring in the players and the game. But what happens if you bring the players and the game into the same space at the same time? With augmented reality, we can do that. So here we have an, a uh, 3D model of one of the players of the uh, game characters. And again, this is from uh, Art Fabric, uh, the people that have did the 3D scans earlier. And now moving around, we can zoom in, and we can see that we have some very, very nice 3D uh, realistic uh, models on here, some nice photorealism added to this. But let's go a little bit further with this. Let's actually add in some gameplay in here from Paragon. Now, here are the heroes from Paragon down here. Now, when you're doing eSports coverage, you want to bring in the data from the game as well. So we can bring in the gameplay data uh, and actually display that using traditional sports production tools. But we can also go in and swap cameras over to our in-can system and bring in the actual assets from the game. So here we got this massive beast right here in front of me. Now, Sam from NCAM is going to take this camera handheld so that we can explore the space a little bit more using the NCAM tracking system. NCAM has an optical tracking system, which gives you total flexibility of movement in any environment. So as we move in around the camera in the studio, he can be have complete flexibility, but he can also take this outside. So you can do this in the stadium or on the street corner and have all your aug augmented reality assets in the same place with your presenter. And this is what it's all about. This is being able to take in all the graphics, storytelling tools, and the presenter, putting them in the same place so they can give you a story that is compelling, not just for the audience at home, but for everyone, and keeps them coming back to watch you more. Now, if you have any questions about how all this is done, please come on up. We'll be happy to answer them for you. And thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of the day here at IBC.